Hola, hello. Uh, my name is Maria Krstovska. I'm coming from Kumanovo, North Macedonia, a small country in the Balkans, in Europe. Uh, and uh, I'm a youth worker, a youth activist, I would say, uh, and yeah, advocate for intercultural acceptance. Thank you for invitation first. Um, I'm fine, yeah, in different time zones, so it's already late afternoon here, a bit tired from work, but still, uh, still eager very to, to talk to you and to tell you my story and what I uh, do here. I hope that would be interesting. Yeah, well, thank you first for the invitation. Um, I would not call myself a defender. I would not use that uh, such a strong attribute, I would say. I would rather say I'm a human rights uh, activist and advocate for intercultural acceptance. Um, my work is especially focused on the youth. So I work with uh, youth and I advocate for better youth rights and for greater youth participation in uh, the decision-making processes. Okay. Um, I work in a youth organization called Center for Intercultural Dialogue, which is based in Kumanovo, North Macedonia. And I work on promoting intercultural acceptance, uh, building capacities of young people and actually empowering them to act as change makers in the society. And how we do it, uh, we have been creating learning opportunities within non-formal education and youth work uh, for diverse groups of uh, learners, but especially focusing of uh, bringing together people from different ethnicity and different uh, cultural background. Just to give you a bit of a context in, uh, of, of my community, uh, North Macedonia is a very small but multi-ethnic country, uh, particularly my city, Kumanovo. There are several minority groups such as Albanians, Roma, Serbians, Bosniaks, Turks, etc. Uh, and we still face this problem of uh, ethnic segregation. Predominantly, okay. I would say, between Macedonians as the majority of the population and Albanians as the biggest minority group. Uh, for example, I can say my story, I'm raised in a monoethnic uh, environment. I studied in a school where there were no Albanians. I was going out in places where no Albanians were going. So by the time I was 15, I actually, as a Macedonian girl uh, in Kumanova, I didn't have a chance to, to meet and interact with, um, with Albanians, for example, with my peers okay. from ethnic uh, uh, Albanian ethnicity. Uh, and that's when I was 15, when I heard about the existence of Center for Intercultural Dialogue, CID, my organization. And I've heard about the work that they are doing in the youth center in Kumanovo, which is called Multipulti. Uh, yeah. The youth center is still existing and running. So uh, back then I engaged in several workshops uh, through which I created friendships that are long lasting, I still nurture and I still create new uh, friendships. So I can say that I have learned a lot throughout the years of involvement in uh, CAD, in the youth work, and I have grown personally and professionally. Um, and um, until the point of 2017, I started uh, to work in the organization. I started to organize and implement different activities for young people uh, and started to empowering them, as I said, through non-formal education and through youth work uh, to build their capacities and to help them to become the future leaders and change makers to change something in the society. And that actually became my passion. Uh, alongside <laughs> you, look, <laughs> I see on your face, you're really, you're really <laughs> passionate. Yeah, I'm really eager of working because, I, as I said, I learned a lot uh, through, through youth work and through non formal education, and I just uh, would like to multiply that to, to help other young people achieve that and also create opportunities for other young people and like multiply the effect and change something in the, in the community. Yeah, well, as I said, like I'm not focusing in general human rights and something like more and more concrete. My focus is on youth rights, especially, and probably I would say the, the youth participation as a, as a human right. And that what, means what, what age? And to age uh, mm -hmm. By the law in my country, by Macedonian law, youth are considered from 15 to 29 years old. 29, 15 to? 
to 29. 29 yes in yes. europe in general it's up to 30 so it's 15 to 30 but uh, in macedonia it's one year less so i still have like two years more oh, why? to be considered as a young person <laughs> <laughs> why this um, year what's the difference of 29 and of the 30 actually i cannot tell why it is uh, like that but um, that's how it is for years um, last year in January, uh, the law on youth participation and youth policies was adopted in my country and it also defines youth okay. uh, category like this, 15 to 29, so yeah, a bit different, one year difference from the European um, standards, but still Macedonia is not part of the EU, so we have oh. the right to be a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> when you lose the two on your number of your age, you're not young anymore. <laughs> when you lose the two. Well, as when I you said, start I always, 30, <laughs> so I always uh, say to people like young by age and young by spirit. So I think that I will okay, say young, okay. young in spirit even when I turn 30 and more. <laughs> of course. When you work with young people, you have to feel young as well. <laughs> oh my God. So, um, sorry, I, I was uh, interrupted you. So tell me no, no, no problem. Yeah, I wanted to say that I'm, yeah, just to mention it one more time that my focus is on youth, on youth participation, on promotion and advocacy, actually, of, uh, for human rights, but especially youth rights, um, rather than this defense, so more into promotion. But I can share, uh, if you're interested, like, um, a good practice from my organization, how we do it and uh, how we empower young people, how we bring them together actually, and how we provide these opportunities for them. Um, I can, I think, call it like a signature approach of uh, CAD, my organization that we have, and that is the bilingual um, facilitation of workshops. That is um, an approach that was developed by the Center for Human Rights and Conflict Resolution when the organization started. Maybe I was supposed to say that the organization is established in 2006, so it's already for 15 years uh, working uh, on this um, on, in this field, on this topic, in the same city and in the country, I would say. Uh, so um, why we do that? Why is this uh, bilingual facilitation, co-facilitation and why, why it means? I mentioned this gap and this division between Macedonians and Albanians, um, oh, oh. like the, the biggest groups. But I will consider, like I, as I mentioned, uh, also the, the other minority groups that are. But basically, because in 2001 there was an ethnic conflict as well, but I don't, I won't go into that. So uh, we we were researching what young people need and uh, how would they feel more safe um, to be in the same room with people that they don't know, people from youngsters, their peers from different ethnicity, from different culture, and we actually understood that they want to see this resemblance in us. So we always oh. go when we facilitate, we go, for example, one Macedonian and one, one Albanian. Sure. And it speaks their own language. So Macedonians speak Macedonians, Albanians speak Albanians. And it's also with the participants. They are free to be uh, talking in their own language. And we are not translating like every word, word by word, what everyone is saying, but we are kind of helping to get the context and uh, to be able to understand each other even without this literature like translation word by word. I can even mention uh, we had workshops in theater workshops in Multipulti and um, cool. there were several theater performances, bilingual theater performances. Oh my god, how cool is that? Albanian. <laughs> it's very, it's amazing to, to see, to, to witness that like uh, because it um, shows us that we don't need translation every time to understand each other and like one thing that I can say, we all laugh in the same language. So you can all have oh, fun while really watching nice. the that sounds really nice. performance in, in different languages, but in the same spot, in the same place, in the same time. Okay, well, um, first I would like to say that I totally agree that the films are a very powerful tool um, to transfer a message and to sparkle like conversation discussions. And it's a really, really powerful tool. Um, if I think about which movie uh, maybe correlates with what I do, and mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning I said that I'm a promoter of intercultural acceptance, so uh, I would mention one, one film which is from 2003, uh, it's called Whose Is This Song? 
It's actually a documentary. Uh, it's a funny, dramatic, sometimes tragic comic <laughs> uh, <laughs> documentary, which uh, shows some um, uh, search for the truth about a song. That's why oh. it's called Whose Is This Song? Uh, it's from a Bulgarian uh, director. It's Bulgari Bulgarian. Bulgarian. Bulgarian, yes. But it shows an exciting journey which goes uh, in Bulgaria, Albania, Macedonia, Greece, Turkey, Bosnia. I think I mentioned all the countries, the several Balkanic countries is, is, in the is Balkans. Your Balkanic well yes yes and it actually um so this uh, person goes in all these countries and asks uh, who is this song and every um people in every country claim it's theirs oh. uh, and it's uh, you can oh. see like variety in some country it's a love song in some country it's a revolutionary song in some is military march, for example, or an anthem, religious song, etc. But they are all claiming that it's their song. Um, in the end, the movie it's not like um, whose is the song, uh, but it's about how the song as um, cultural thing, as cultural commodity, is used in the service of nationalism. Oh, how we okay. show this what it represents. Stereotypes. It's talking about yeah. represent. Yeah, and how we have these stereotypes and how we always like the habit of uh, wanting to appropriating all that is good for yourself or claiming that it's yours and that the others are not capable of having the same thing and not having the same qualities. So it's a very interesting movie and sometimes we use it in our work when we have this intercultural group or uh, with youngsters, we show them the movie and it sparkles conversation like discussions afterwards about stereotypes, about identity, about culture. And for me, I claim myself as a world citizen and uh, cosmopolitan. I do believe- We are that, two um, world citizens here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very glad to hear that. So in my, in my perspective, each of us, every person is an individual and we all have our identity, which is consisted of several layers. Uh, some of those layers can be, could be nationality and ethnicity, but uh, they don't have to, um, actually I would say they must not be the first and the most important thing that we see in person. We have to give chance to, to get to know the people better and because beneath all this, all those layers, we are all the same human beings. Oh my, <laughs> you, you, you're gonna be a writer. <laughs> you're gonna be a writer. Ah, no, no, I don't have those ambitions, but. <laughs> Maybe, try it. Because you you're really good with words, you know? It don't, doesn't oh, feel like, like, a, like a, 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 a writing speech, but you flew it, you flew it like in, in the in a hip hop culture it calls flow. You know, you got a lot of flow to speak and and say whatever you think uh, in a really good way. You know? Thank uh, you. And a really good voice to see it. <laughs> yeah, fun fact uh, about me and when I was 10 years old, which was like 17 years ago, I was um, TV, how do you say like TV speaker on a children TV show. Yeah. Uh, and and now I'm frightened from cameras. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say for everyone to believe in themselves, and maybe it's too cliche, but it's still my favorite quote from any time, and it's be the change you want to see. But I would add on that, like multiply it, motivate others, empower others to be the change and to, to change something for a good in the society. Uh, and always try to change something like, I'm sure that uh, we cannot, like one person cannot change the whole world, but uh, every person can change a world of someone else. And okay. that's enough, that's uh, wonderful, and that's all we need to change something step by step. Mm -hmm. Well, I cannot say that I know the situation there and everything that is uh, going, uh, going on in Latin America. So, but I do believe that people who are there and people who want to make some changes, who want to do something uh, to better for like protection of human I'll rights learn. and defending of human rights, they are aware of the situation. And for me, that's the first step like to 
to see what is needed to identify these breaches of human rights if they are and i would say like never never to stop never to um to, to surrender like to, to continue doing what you know best doing because as i said we are all individuals we might have a lot of different characteristics uh, everyone is has their own identity but we need all that we are all human beings so we have to uh, have the same human rights and we have to have the same opportunities to to enjoy those human rights okay without borders yes exactly no Always. matter where are we in the world whether macedonia or latin america we are same we are people thank you gracias bye